hurricane season doesn't stop for a pandemic, and neither do we. From this point forward, conditions will continue to deteriorate. Don't let COVID-19 take your eye off the tropics. This year's threat is more complex and dangerous than ever before. Remain vigilant, pay close attention to the Weather Channel. No one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the Weather Channel. Get the information you need to stay safe every day. Storm safety in a pandemic, all season long, right here on the Weather Channel. <coughs> Once again, we're back here in South Beach in Miami. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel. Want to get you updated because with a 10 p.m. advisory, we had the warnings and watches or some changes. First, the tropical storm warning was extended up the east coast of Florida from north of Jupiter Inlet up to the Brevard Volusia County line. And then on the west coast, it went from Bonita Beach north to Englewood. And then they issued a tropical storm watch uh, for the areas on the west coast from Englewood up to Anna Maria Island. So that's getting up not far from Tampa. Uh, the uh, overall picture hasn't changed too in Miami, uh, Day, Broward, Collier, and the Keys. We're still under a tropical storm warning and a hurricane watch. We've got a 65 mile an hour tropical storm uh, moving northeast. Eventually, it's going to make that left turn, and the latest track from the Hurricane Center takes it a little bit farther south. Uh, it's going to go through the probably the middle Keys, the center. But remember, the impacts go way, way out from the center, especially with this one with those winds gusting 30 to 40 miles an hour in that push of water. So we're going to have water rise and a risk of some storm surge all the way up the coast, uh, past the Space Coast towards Daytona and uh, Jacksonville. So that's uh, what's in store. And most of that's going to be from tomorrow afternoon through Monday afternoon. Uh, wait to see the uh, new runs of the American and European models. Uh, the late afternoon American model GFS was a little bit faster and got it through here and back into the Gulf by uh, certainly dinner time on Monday. Let's go back to the radar right now. We just had a squall come through here, uh, probably gusted at least 35 miles an hour. Lauderdale gusted to 48 miles an hour, a little bit after 9 p.m. tonight. Uh, they've had uh, over an inch of rain up there. Uh, down in Key West, they've had three inches of rain today. And there's that squall heading uh, now just to our uh, west out towards Miami International. I should check the ob there in a minute. And then up towards Aventura and up towards Hollywood here in the next few minutes. So Carl, uh, just kind of a taste of what's to come uh, from later tomorrow into Monday. Some very heavy rain. And as we saw with that squall, it, it, it just just like that. You feel the rush of the wind and, the, uh, and then all of a sudden the rain comes right in. It's just going to be like that continuously as we get into uh, Sunday and Monday. Yeah, already a faster flow upstairs and uh, those showers as they come in just bringing that down. Uh, thanks so much, Mike. And let's talk a little bit mm -hmm. about this new advisory from the Hurricane Center. Again, a 65 mile per hour tropical storm right now. It's moving northeast at 13 miles per hour and being sheer, there's some wind coming out of the southwest that's blowing the weather off to the northeast relative to that center. That's probably still going to be in place. And so that shear is one of the things that's likely going to keep it from really taking off in intensity, though it could get to hurricane as it's coming by. And as Mike mentioned, because there's this high pressure off to the north, it's going to be the combination of this system and the high that brings strong winds in uh, all across the state. And so, you know, even though you've got a cone that's down there in the Keys, it's going to be windy through the entire state just about, uh, and that's going to be through tomorrow evening and then into Monday as well. And then the storm comes back out into the Gulf. A lot of question about A, where it's going to go, and B, what exactly it's going to be. Some of the intensity guidance indicating that there is potential for the storm to uh, really get a lot stronger as it moves uh, into the Gulf. And we'll just have to wait and see and see if the guidance continues to hold on to that idea. We saw a really big uh, switch in the intensity guidance just within the last few hours. There is going to be a severe threat as well. And right now, 2 out of 10 on the Torcon for southern parts of Florida. Winds will be coming out of the east at the surface and coming out of the southeast at about 5,000 feet up. And that turning of the wind creates a spin in the atmosphere, which can get into thunderstorms. And that's the beginning of the process that leads to tornadoes. So as these waves of storms come in, we certainly could be looking at some some brief tornado spin-ups in addition to the plain old regular gradient wind there, the strong wind and uh, the very heavy rain that's going to be coming down through the next couple of days. Colleen, over to you. Yes, and Carl, as you've been mentioning, it, it's tricky, this forecast, even mm -hmm. where Ada will go after Florida. So you cannot take your eyes off the tropics, even in November. And that means you got to be ready for a potential storm. Meteorologist Jim Cantori has some inexpensive hurricane hacks you can do right now at home.
During a tropical storm or hurricane, it's not easy to keep you or your belongings warm and dry. So here are a few household items that can help you out in a pinch. There are dozens of things you can do with large plastic trash bags during a storm. You can fill them with water and use them as sandbags, as a rain collector, a tarp, or a waterproof poncho. Small plastic bags are handy as well. Try wearing them as socks inside your shoes. Not only will your feet stay dry, but they will keep your feet warm, even if your shoes get wet, which they likely will. If you're looking for a safe place to store your valuables when there's a risk of water inside the house, try the dishwasher. Yeah, for extra peace of mind, you can wrap the items in plastic bags, but that closed door creates a seal, and that will keep the water out. Depending on where you are, you may need to start a fire for warmth. So pre-making these fire starters with just an egg carton, lint, and a little petroleum jelly can be a lifesaver. You can store them in a sealed bag until you need them. Just a few ways you can use those household items to help you prepare for a tropical storm or hurricane. And our live coverage continues as we track Ada as it moves closer and closer to the Sunshine State. We'll have more coming up next on the Weather Channel. New video into the Weather Channel, and as you can guess, it was not a picturesque beach day for South Florida. Dark skies over Miami Beach today, as we've seen throughout the day. And of course, Mike Seidel firsthand has seen the changing conditions there. Windy conditions, too, with rough surf ahead of Tropical Storm Ada's arrival. Tomorrow will be more of the same as downpours and gusty winds start to blow in throughout the day. And then, of course, things really start to deteriorate Sunday night into Monday. It's 29 past the hour. Thank you for tuning in to our special coverage here on the Weather Channel as we track Tropical Storm Ada. Let's get you the latest headlines as Ada watches in effect for both coasts of more rain on the way and Mike those conditions just keep changing at your location and that's kind of the weather story going forward. Yes, and once they change for the worst tomorrow, they're going to stay like that for a while. We've had two squalls come through here this evening. The last one just a little while ago, it was pretty gnarly for about uh, five or six minutes. Very quick hitters, heavy rainfall, wind gusts 40 miles an hour plus. We had a gust up at Lauderdale, 11 after 9 Eastern of 48 miles an hour. Let's give you the latest on Ada. We got the latest advisory in just before 10 p.m. Eastern. And 65 mile an hour winds, pressure 991. So that's unchanged versus the previous three hours, the 4 p.m. advisory. I should say the 7 p.m. Eastern advisory. Uh, the pressure, as I said, 991, moving northeast now at 13 miles an hour, so it's slowed down a little bit. But you can see on the satellite loop, the big area of convection and how there's another piece of it getting blown off to the northeast. That's the wind shear. So it's not a symmetric system, but that moisture is going to wrap in here. Uh, not only here in South Florida, but really up north of Lake Okeechobee all the way to Orlando, you're going to see some rainfall. And they did extend those warnings up the east coast. So uh, there's going to be uh, an impact on the coast with the uh, high surf, the rip current risk, some beach erosion, and also a bit of a surge even as far north as Jacksonville. Here in South Florida, we're expecting that storm surge between two and four feet. That's above normally high ground. And the key is also the high tides, about 2 a.m., uh, on uh, Monday morning and then later in the afternoon on Monday about 2.30, 2.45. But we're in the middle of the astro astronomical tide cycle. So we're not going to have the astronomical uh, oomph or impact like we would with a full moon or a new moon, Carl. Tidal range now at about two feet here in South Beach. So I don't think we're going to have many major issues with coastal flooding, but inland flooding, that's uh, almost a, a slam dunk because of how wet the ground is from recent rainfalls. Yeah, and already some uh, street flooding reported in the Keys tonight. Thank you so much, Mike. And let's take a look mm -hmm. at the forecast track and intensities from the Hurricane Center. We just got a new advisory from them at 10 o'clock and not a whole lot of big changes here. Uh, the track just a little farther south and west relative to the previous track. Uh, the model guidance has been indicating more of a hard left there once the storm gets away from Cuba and into the Florida Straits. 
States. That's not going to matter that much, though, because there is a strong high to the north, and it's the conjunction of those two systems that will bring wind uh, all across the state. I'll show you that in the modeling in just a moment. Then it comes out into the Gulf. And there's a whole lot of question about what's going to happen at that point. There are some models that take it into the west coast of Florida. Some take it up towards the uh, panhandle. Uh, there's a whole range of possibilities in terms of track and also in terms of intensity. And right now, the Hurricane Center uh, taking it up to strong tropical storm force uh, wind once again, a strong tropical storm. But there is some chance that we could be looking at a hurricane uh, in the Gulf of Mexico come next week. Now, here is what's going on between these two systems. Strong high to the north. You've got the tropical storm coming in from the south. And so the pressure difference between those two is what is helping to create this wind. So you can even see that tonight where there's a lot of wind uh, now coming into Cuba, but there's a huge area of strong wind to the north, and that is only going to be amplified tomorrow as the storm approaches. So strong wind all across the state of Florida from the Space Coast on southward into South Florida, across Alligator Alley into the southwest part of the state, and then up into Bradenton and Sarasota and Tampa. That'll be tomorrow night. We find more of the same into Monday as well. And then it finally begins to relent by the time we get into Tuesday and then the storm uh, there out into the eastern part of the Gulf of Mexico. And as Mike mentioned, a lot of rain on the way. We're talking about as much as potentially a foot of rain in parts of South Florida and very serious flash flooding as a result. Residents across Miami-Dade County showed up at public works and utility departments across the area to fill bags with sand in an effort to protect their homes and businesses from the flooding that Ada will bring to South Florida. Now on Friday, Miami-Dade County Mayor declared a state of emergency and asked residents to prepare for this upcoming storm. Winds could top out around 65 miles per hour near the center of the storm Sunday night into Monday. And also on top of that, we're talking about storm surge and several inches of rain. So let's talk about some of the city timing and what we could expect as we head into the coming days. First off, Miami, we've been talking about you a lot. You are bracing for Ada. Right now, you're still seeing some 30 mile an hour wind gusts as we have some of these squalls come through, some of these thunderstorms. But then as we head through Sunday night into Monday morning, we could see winds well over 50 miles an hour, as well as five to eight inches of rain on top all the rain that you've already seen. So again, uh, much of the east coast of Florida has already seen a lot of rain. And so with saturated soil, it's not going to take too much to start to see some urban flooding. Here's a look at the future radar. Lots of showers and thunderstorms rolling through ahead of the brunt of Ada. So again, we are already seeing uh, three to four inches of rain in some spots. And then as we head through Sunday night into Monday, that's when the heaviest of the precipitation rolls in, the strongest of the winds. And then that'll be rolling through not just South Florida, but then also getting all the way into the Keys as well as we go through Sunday night into Monday. Here's a look at Key West, for instance. Uh, 60 plus mile an hour winds Monday morning through Monday night, three to five inches of rain on top of what they've already seen. They're upwards of around three inches of rain so far, and then we'll have additional showers and thunderstorms coming through. And then Fort Myers, as we go to the west coast of Florida, this is both coasts that are going to be seeing the impacts of Ada. You'll see several days of showers and thunderstorms. Again, most all of South Florida will see the bulk of the rain Sunday night into Monday. But then as we continue to see what happens to Ada, that's where we could keep this unsettled weather around all the way through the end of next week. And as I mentioned, Miami is one of the places bracing for Ada. And the Magic City has dealt with its fair share of tropical storms and hurricanes in the past. Meteorologist Alex Wilson explains what puts Miami in this hot spot. Miami attracts millions of people each year, but what makes this place so attractive also makes it vulnerable to hurricanes. Storms can come from the Florida Straits and from the Gulf literally from all sides. But despite the threat, the population has grown nearly 40% since 1992's Hurricane Andrew. And with 2 million people in the coastal evacuation zones, clearing the area could take days, especially the South Florida region. It could take upwards of 70 hours to get people to an area of safety. If a Hurricane Andrew strength storm with a bit larger diameter came through this area today, 10 to 15 feet of storm surge would push through, damaging every building at its bottom floor and sweeping away everything at ground level. Six feet of water over land means water is going to be at the top of your front door. 
and staying in a high rise isn't a good idea either. Sand can fill up stairways and elevator shafts, trapping you. Well, let's break down the rain and flood threat because all of South Florida under a flood watch all the way through Tuesday evening. So again, from Vero Beach all the way through Homestead and then even getting into portions of the Florida Keys that have already seen some flooding so far. Future radar shows you all that rain rolling in Sunday night into Monday. We'll have some very heavy pockets of it. And of course, with many of these areas already saturated from previous rainfall, it won't take much to see flooding. And that's why we do expect some flash flooding tomorrow through Monday morning, especially across the East Coast of Florida and then this could also extend into Tuesday morning as well from Vero Beach all the way down through West Palm Fort Lauderdale and then even getting as far south as Key Largo. So again, we're going to have the flooding on top of the storm surge that we will be continuing to monitor for these same areas. Rain still to come, five to eight inches of rain, more widespread, maybe upwards of a foot of rain in areas, especially there for South Florida. Some of those spots really seeing the brunt of the rain. And then, of course, for the east side of Florida, as I mentioned, that's an area that's already very saturated from recent rains from October and so far in November. And so, again, won't take too much to get some flooding going. Unfortunately, other areas are a little drier. But now I do want to bring in storm specialist Carl Parker to talk about some questions that people may have. And first off, wow, Carl, we are into November, the first time we're talking about the name Ada. Mm. And then this has been quite a tricky storm and the intensity has been all over the place. What should we expect moving forward as we head through the rest of the weekend? Well, it is a, a very tricky forecast. I mean, intensity forecasting in general is very hard. It's been uh, even harder this year, it seems, because there's so much energy in the oceans. And so we've seen so many storms rapidly intensify, including this one before it came into Central America. Now, right now, we are seeing some wind shear affecting the system. You can see where the center is relative to all that weather. And it is off to the east because there is strong wind coming in from the southwest. Now that wind shear is going to continue to be around. We think it is going to start to relent as the storm is getting closer. And in fact, there might even be a little bit of lift in place. But I also want you to see what happens after the storm passes by South Florida. So there you see that wind that's coming into the system right there. Then watch what happens here as it moves out into the Gulf. That wind goes away. Now there is likely going to be some dry air that gets involved with the system. But in terms of the upper level winds, it's going to be in a very favorable environment. And so that, Colleen, is why uh, some of the modeling is suggesting that we could be looking at a strengthening storm as it comes out into the Gulf. It, you know, it's not just one model. There are actually a, a number of them that show this second peak in intensity here as it comes out into the Gulf. So that is certainly among the, the many things that we need to watch. And Carl, another question for you. I know a lot of folks are, are seeing the track of this and how Ada is moving into the Gulf. What do you expect after that? Because I, I know it could put people on the edge of their seat just saying, hey, well, what happens to Ada after it hits Florida? Yeah, also a very difficult question. And there you see uh, some of the ensemble members of the European model. What we think eventually is going to happen is it's going to be carried off to the northeast. But the question is, where will it be when that happens? Is it going to be sitting just offshore relative to Florida, in which case that raises the stakes for the west coast of Florida, or is it going to be farther offshore, in which case it might take more uh, aim on the Florida panhandle? All open questions and we'll endeavor to resolve them. Welcome back to South Beach in Miami. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel as we watch Ada make its approach towards Cuba right now. It'll cross Cuba, head up towards the Keys in South Florida, then make the left turn. The track forecast has shifted south a little bit as of 10 p.m. We've got another full advisory and another track coming up about 4 a.m. Eastern on Sunday morning. In the meantime, here in South Florida, we've been following rain squalls. We had a pretty gnarly one come through here about uh, half an hour ago. Uh, Lauderdale had one about uh, an hour or so ago. They got to 48 miles an hour. I checked the one that came through here. 
it headed up to Miami International, and their gust was about 29 miles an hour, so not a big deal. But they did pick up a quarter of inch of rain in a short period of time. More rain down south of the Keys, but again, the brunt of the rain and the wind and the storm, the core, is going to approach later tomorrow, tomorrow night, and Monday. However, some of the later models are speeding this up, so we may be uh, getting this out of here faster on Monday. We'll wait and see what the... Uh, European does and the uh, latest GFS American model does, but the sooner the better. The bottom line, we're still going to get a ton of rainfall here, and that is going to be the number one impact, I think, Carl, uh, inland, away from the beaches where we're going to have the erosion and the surf and the rip currents and some surge is the uh, prolific amount of rainfall on top of the saturated ground here in uh, Miami-Dade County. Certainly a lot of worries about that, uh, Mike. Thank you so much for your reporting tonight. And let's take a look at the latest on the storm from the National Hurricane Center. Right now, a 65-mile-per-hour tropical storm, and uh, it is undergoing some wind shear right now. Wind's coming out of the southwest and into the system. We'll see more of that through tonight and tomorrow as well. So that is most likely going to keep it from getting a whole lot stronger, though it is possible that it does become a hurricane as it is nearing the coast. And it's also important to remember that we're going to see wind well to the north of that track. You, you never want to look at a track and think, oh, I'm in the cone or I'm not in the cone. Uh, that's not what that is meant to do. It's meant to show you where the center is most likely to go, but every storm is different, and this is a case where you're going to see wind well out to the northeast uh, of that center of circulation. And then beyond that, it gets into the Gulf, it gets into an area of light steering flow, and it just sits basically Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then finally probably starts to make a move towards the northeast uh, on Friday. But where that happens, Ready happening and a lot more rain is going to be coming in through tonight and tomorrow. So that is the rainfall to come a widespread area of five to six to seven to eight inches and that in uh, Palm Beach County, Broward County, Miami-Dade and Monroe counties as well with some pockets of eight to 12 and even more than a foot in some spots. So that is certainly going to be enough to cause serious flooding. Now here you see the gradient of wind between uh, the area of high pressure to the north and the tropical storm to the south. And it's that gradient, that difference in pressure that's creating all this wind. So you've got the wind near the core of the storm, which you see now coming into Cuba, but then you've got this huge area of wind to the north of that. And so some of the more re recent model guidance taking it in a little farther to the south or having it make a left rather a little farther to the south and maybe staying you know, towards the southern end of the Keys, the center. That's not going to matter that much because, again, the combination of the two systems, the low pressure and the high pressure, are creating this huge area of wind that will spread across much of the state during the day tomorrow. So very gusty in the Space Coast and in Orlando, Tampa, Bradenton, Bradenton Sarasota, uh, right down into Fort Myers and, of course, in South Florida as well. And then here we see uh, more of that going into Monday morning. Colleen, over to you. And Carl, I know Ada is our big story, but also want to touch briefly on the West Coast and all the rain and snow that is moving into there. First off, this is new video into the Weather Channel, a welcome sight for California, and that is rain. This is video from an area near Riverside, and we're seeing nearly about three and a half inches below average for rainfall for the year in Riverside. But now a welcome sight to see the rain falling. A flash flood watch actually in effect for Riverside until the top of the hour. So the West Coast seeing a lot of storminess, not just in the way of rain, but also snow, major snowstorm for Montana. You can see this low pressure system, all this counterclockwise rotation here is bringing in some unsettled weather in the form of snow, as well as even some thunderstorms there across the four corners. Right now, there's that blizzard warning for Great Falls. They could see one to two feet of snow on top of several inches of snow that parts of Montana have already seen, especially on the eastern slopes of the Montana Rockies and getting into central and northern Montana. Also, winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings blanket uh, parts of uh, the Four Corners as well as even parts of California getting up into Tahoe and Mammoth Lake. So something to be watching as we head into the rest of the weekend as well as into the beginning of next week. On top of this, these blizzard-like conditions in Montana because of the wind as well. We have this low-pressure system here. All these white 
lines on your screen, those are isobars, and they uh, signify constant pressure lines. And so when they get close together, you have a tightened pressure gradient, so it leads to stronger winds. So we're going to have the snow, the rain in areas, and then some very gusty winds. So pluses and minuses for all the fires that they're fighting there for the West Coast. We do have the rain, we do have a little bit of snow, but we also still have the wind involved. Now, of course, our big story tonight has been Tropical Storm Ada. Thank you so much for joining us. Our special coverage tonight on this Saturday night. And then, of course, we'll continue with live coverage from the field all day long tomorrow as we continue to keep our eyes on Tropical Storm Ada. Inter tropical Storm Ada is now a 65 mile per hour tropical storm, just shy of what we need to have a hurricane, and that is entirely possible as the storm is approaching tomorrow. This is the latest forecast from the Hurricane Center. The center of the storm is going to pass most likely very close to the Keys. A really gusty wind, heavy rain coming into South Florida and the Keys uh, tomorrow evening and through Monday. Then the storm slows down and kind of meanders in the eastern part of the Gulf. So tropical storm warnings across South Florida and the Keys but also extended farther north because there is going to be very strong wind all the way up into the Space Coast. That's courtesy of not just this system, but a high pressure off of the north as well. Hurricane Watch is also in effect in Miami-Dade and Monroe counties and parts of southwest Florida as uh, the storm again could become a hurricane. But a huge area of strong wind coming across the state, uh, especially late tomorrow and through the day on Monday. That will begin to relent going into Tuesday. And then that storm uh, sitting out over the Gulf, and there is some chance that it will get a good bit stronger as it sits out uh, over the Gulf Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. A lot of rain already coming in. We're going to see plenty more of that. This is a model forecast showing the waves coming in overnight tonight, but the intensity of the rainfall is really going to step up tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening through the overnight on Monday. And then finally, the core of that storm is going to begin to move away. So in areas where we've had a lot of rain for a good month now, we're talking about widespread amounts of five to eight inches across South Florida. We're going to have much more on the storm starting tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And now your tropical update. Here's the latest advisory. A look from above. The latest forecast track. 